Today on How It's Made Dream Cars, the Tesla Model S, a high-performance luxury sedan with zero emissions. Located in Fremont, California, the Tesla factory occupies more than 5 million square feet. The facility was jointly owned by Toyota and GM before Tesla bought it. The Model S runs on electricity alone. It can go almost 300 miles on a single charge. Drivers can recharge for free at a network of supercharging stations. These stations can add half a charge in just 20 minutes and up to 80% charge in 40 minutes. In 2006, the Tesla Roadster rocked the automotive world. It was the first all-electric production car that could travel almost 200 miles on a single charge. Could go from 0 to 60 in just under 4 seconds, with a top speed of over 120 miles per hour. The Roadster was a limited edition proof of concept vehicle that cleared a path for the Model S. Most electric vehicles are just modified conventional cars. The Model S is the first electric sedan built from the ground up. The Tesla Model S body is 98% aluminum. A robot transfers aluminum sheets or blanks into the draw die of a stamping press. The upper die applies more than 1,400 tons of downward force, while the lower section exerts about 130 tons. This force stretches the blank aluminum sheet over the form in the center of the lower die. Robots move the part from station to station. Each panel undergoes a series of procedures before emerging on the other side of this gigantic structure. The structure is called the tandem press line. Workers inspect each finished panel to ensure there are no flaws and that all openings have been cut. The tandem press line is capable of exerting more than 11,000 tons of force and creates 5,000 parts every day. Tesla uses state-of-the-art technology to build the Model S's undercarriage. Here, a robot brings the car's front, center, and rear floor panels to the frame. A team of robots use CMT or cold metal transfer welding to join the parts. With the floor panels in place, the underbody moves forward on the line. And a pair of robots install the body sides. The body sides are the complete sides of the Model S. They feature high strength steel reinforced B pillars. Next, the sides are joined at the top by a pair of headers that can span the width. These will complete the basic structure of the car. Tesla uses several methods to join the car's body components, including cold metal transfer welding, conventional spot welding, structural adhesive, and self-piercing rivets. A worker now attaches the door panels. They each have two hinges attached with four bolts. Like most of the car, the lightweight doors are made of aluminum. The total weight of the aluminum used in the Model S is just over 410 pounds. The front fenders go on before workers install the hood. Since there is no engine, the front hood is really just a cover for the front trunk space. The body of the car is now completely assembled. It is what manufacturers call a body in white. A technician gives the body in white a thorough inspection, checking all weld points and structural adhesive joints, as well as the overall fit and finish. In the paint department, the car body goes through a pretreatment process. 
It's essentially a bath for the car and a giant dishwasher. Once clean, the body receives a corrosion-resistant electrolytic coating, a primer, a base coat, and a clear coat. When the six-hour process is complete, three separate teams of inspectors examine the surface to ensure its quality. It may not look like it, but this Model S's powertrain has already been installed in its undercarriage. The car's drive unit sits snugly between the rear wheels. It may be small, but it cranks out over 400 horsepower. Tesla Motors builds most of its car components in-house, including the AC or alternating current motor. This step in the production process is called the stator wind line. A machine unspools and winds over a half a mile of copper wire for each motor. An electric motor consists of a stator and a rotor. Here, a machine begins building a stator by pulling the copper coils into a structure called a stack. This is a three-phase motor, so there are three separate coils of copper. When in use, a current will pulse through each coil, creating a temporary magnet. The rotor will turn because its magnet follows the stator's magnetic field. This worker carefully lengthens and straightens the ends of each bundle of wires. This is so he can insert the hydraulic lift needed to move the stator to the next phase of production. For the motor to work properly, the bundles must be insulated so the phases don't touch each other. A technician insulates the copper wire by carefully encasing each one in a protective sleeve. While much of the production process at Tesla is completed by high-tech machinery, this step is so important it's best done by hand. For all its futuristic qualities, the Model S has a few old school elements. The motor, for instance, is a direct descendant of the 100-year-old motor developed by Nikola Tesla himself. A worker snips the ends of the copper bundles to prepare them for the next step. These components are called lugs. A worker slides them over the wires where they will be crimped, forming the attachment points for the motor's three phases. You might be surprised to see a sewing machine on the production line for an electric motor, but that's exactly what this is. Tesla uses this highly specialized device to bind the coils securely in place. The more tightly bound the wires are, the more efficiently the motor will work. This binding process also prepares the stator to be encapsulated in a two-part epoxy, locking everything in place. The two-part epoxy provides an extra layer of insulation, evenly distributing the motor's heat. The completed stator easily slips inside a heated metal casing. As the casing cools, it contracts firmly in place. Next, a technician uses a hoisting system to insert the rotor inside the stator's opening. The completed AC motor moves down the production line to another station, where a worker installs the differential. The three lugs that are attached to the stator's three phases protrude from the top of the motor. Now, the worker attaches other sections of the gearbox in place. Thanks to its well-designed motor and inverter, the Tesla Model S can rely on a simple gearbox rather than a complex transmission. Not only is the gearbox more efficient than a transmission, it's far smaller, leaving more room for storage space. A technician conducts an air leak test on the motor and gearbox before the next phase.
worker now prepares another crucial component of the drive unit, the three-phase tripole inverter. The Model S motor requires an inverter to convert the battery's direct current electricity into alternating current power. Every Tesla Model S drive unit must undergo a dyno test. In this test, two components of the dyno machine plug into the drive unit. The dyno tool then tests every parameter of the drive unit to ensure it meets all design criteria. This test takes just four minutes. Every four and a half minutes, a new drive unit comes off the production line. From here, the drive units head to the general assembly area. From the outside, the Tesla Model S resembles other high-performance luxury sedans. But the general assembly process reveals some intriguing features that make this all-electric vehicle unlike any other car in production. Battery-operated carts guided by magnetic strips in the floor carry the cars through assembly. Technicians install tubes on the underside of the car that will carry coolant to the battery. This will prevent the battery cells from overheating. The technicians also install the high-voltage cables that power the motor. Then a worker lowers the car with a hydraulic lift, preparing it for the next step in production. A robot installs the car's roof. Customers can choose a panoramic roof for their Model S. This all-glass top is constructed of lightweight safety glass that blocks 80% of the sun's heat and 100% of UV rays. A technician begins building the frame for the instrument panel. The frame is one of the few components made of steel in this aluminum-bodied car. The instrument panel needs to be steel because it is the main interface between car and passenger. The panel requires a more dependable structural integrity than aluminum provides. It holds everything from the radio tuner and amplifier to the airbags and touchscreen controls. This touchscreen is central to the Model S's driving experience. It's like an onboard tablet computer that allows the driver to control all aspects of the car's performance. Using the touchscreen, you can access the rear view camera, raise and lower the car, open and close the roof, adjust the brakes, choose the car's performance mode, monitor energy consumption, and fine tune the sound system. Maps, music, and the internet can also be accessed all with a single device. The touchscreen is always up to date, automatically downloading the latest browsers when one becomes available. In the general assembly area, a technician installs the instrument cluster screen and touch screen in the instrument panel. It is upholstered with a synthetic leather. Next, they add air vents and other components. The instrument cluster above the steering wheel will show speed and power use. The driver can also choose to monitor other functions on the display including energy use, sound system, and phone info. Workers use a hydraulic hoist system to install the completed instrument panel. The hoist helps prevent worker injuries and minimizes the chances of any damage being done to the panel during assembly. Technicians install the 12-way power adjustable heated front seats. 
drivers can access many of the touchscreen functions directly from the steering wheel. A worker raises the Model S's drive unit up under the car and secures it in place. The drive unit fits into the rear axle assembly. It provides power directly to the wheels, so there's no need for the usual drive shaft. Finally, it's time to install one of the car's most unique features, the battery. Since Tesla designed the Model S from the ground up, they were able to turn the challenge of battery storage into an asset. The lithium-ion battery weighs almost 1,200 pounds, running the length and width of the car. The battery adds strength and rigidity to the car and lowers its center of gravity. This improves the Model S traction and handling, as well as its safety rating. Technicians mount the 19-inch forged aluminum wheels. In conventional cars, the internal combustion engine provides the power to turn the wheels. But most of that power is lost to heat, friction, and tire rolling resistance, leaving a drive efficiency of 35% at best. Thanks to its incredibly efficient drive unit and sleek aerodynamic design, the Tesla Model S has a drive efficiency of nearly 90%. When a Tesla Model S is complete, it rolls off the assembly line and onto bamboo flooring, a fittingly eco-conscious floor material to showcase this highly efficient zero emissions car. The Tesla Model S is fully assembled and technicians have installed all of the car's firmware. It's nearly ready to drive. The Model S may look like other luxury sedans on the outside, but there are certain details that reveal just how different this electric car really is. Since there's no hot engine to cool down, the Model S has what manufacturers call a nose cone, instead of a traditional front grille. Also, there's no tailpipe or gas cap. Technicians now begin to give the Model S a complete inspection inside and out. They test every aspect of the car's functionality and thoroughly examine the fit and finish. Once it passes inspection, a driver takes the car for its first drive. Tesla builds all of its Model S cars to order. This particular car is destined for an overseas customer, so the steering wheel's on the right-hand side. At this next station, a worker performs a roll test. During this five-minute test, the technician brings the car up to speed, checks the brakes, and sets the alignment. Most cars would also get an emissions test. But since the Tesla Model S doesn't have any emissions, there's no need to conduct this test. Next, the car undergoes a water test. As high pressure water drenches the car, the inspector examines the interior for any signs of leakage. The car's low center of gravity helps it maintain traction in wet weather. The electric drivetrain has low inertia, allowing it to adjust quickly to changing road conditions. In cold weather, drivers can use an app to preheat the car before stepping in. Finally, the Model S is let loose on the Tesla test track. To ensure the car meets its design parameters, the driver gives it a thorough road test. Here, it can flex its electric muscles. Despite the compact size of the car's drive unit, it can accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 5.2 seconds with a top speed of 120 miles per hour. For a sedan, the Model S has a remarkable amount of space. 
With the seats folded flat, it has over 63 cubic feet of total storage space. Using the touchscreen, the driver can customize the car's performance right down to its ride height and steering mode. Onboard maps show the closest supercharging stations and the car keeps close track of its energy usage. With a drag coefficient of 0.24, the Model S is one of the most aerodynamic production cars in existence. This contributes to the car's ability to travel almost 300 miles on a single charge. Tesla is leading the way towards an emissions-free future with this truly electrifying car. Today on How It's Made Dream Cars, the Zenbo ST1, a Danish hypercar that's not just turbocharged, it's also supercharged. Zenfo wants you to be scared when you see an ST1 driving down the road. The designer of the ST1 was told to make it look evil. He turned to images of wild predators for inspiration. The shoulders of a crouching lioness translate to the hypercar's fenders, while the headlights convey an eagle's eyes. These influences help to give the ST1 its aggressive stance. The car's free-flowing positive curves create the impression of dynamic movement even when the car is parked. This design helps express the ST1's monstrous strength with a V8 engine capable of producing 1,104 horsepower. But aesthetics alone don't make a car body. The designer must also incorporate key elements like aerodynamics and downforce for maximum performance. No matter how sophisticated the design software is, there's no substitute for sculpting the car in three dimensions. Zenvo also mills the full-scale version of the ST1 in polystyrene. The final product is a true supercar that can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds flat and reach a top speed of over 230 miles per hour. The secret ingredient at the heart of the car is an engine that has both a turbocharger and a supercharger. Zenvo uses a combination of aluminum and steel to build the chassis of the ST1. The steel is a specially formulated high strength type. This allows for thin walled tubing, a weight saving design that maintains strong torsional rigidity a crucial aspect for any high-performance car. Because the manufacturer only makes five or six ST1s per year, they can focus on crafting every aspect of the car by hand. Here, a technician carefully measures and positions all the components of the rear chassis frame in preparation for welding. He uses a folding ruler to ensure the gaps are perfectly aligned. Then he TIG welds all the components together. It takes about a week to build the rear frame and another week for the front frame. Once complete, the frames join the central monocoque to create the framework for the hypercar. It's hard to believe that this metal frame lies underneath the sleek body of the ST1. Zenvo builds the body exclusively from carbon fiber. A technician uses a pattern to cut out the correct amount of carbon fiber needed to create the car's paneling. Thanks to the very durable but incredibly lightweight nature of carbon fiber, the Zenvo ST1 weighs in at just over 3,000 pounds. The car's lightweight also helps it meet the very stringent Euro 5 emission standards. A remarkable feat considering the amount of horsepower it puts out. Here, a specialist builds a section of the rear side panel. 
by carefully hand layering carbon fiber into a mold. Using carbon fiber to make a car body is a method of construction that blends textile work with sculpting. This process is painstakingly slow and the fiber is expensive. But when you're hand building a highly exclusive dream car in such small numbers, you must use the best materials available. Low volume made to order goods production is one of the few industries that still employs skilled craftspeople. Now, the craftsman presses a sheet of carbon fiber in a mold that is similar but not identical to the first one. This section of the body panel will house Zenvo's signature gas cap, so it must be prepared with that in mind. Once the two molds are prepared, a technician covers them with a layer of material called breather fabric. Then everything is sealed inside a clear plastic bag. The air is vacuumed out, creating a tight seal that ensures precise control over the curing process. To cure the carbon fiber, the worker turns on an electric heating system embedded within the mold. It takes roughly five hours to demold this type of carbon fiber. They let it sit overnight before removing it from the mold. Release agents were applied to the fiber to help with the demolding process. However, the technicians must still proceed very carefully to avoid breaking or cracking the part as they remove it. Here, a worker is using a grinder to cut away excess material. This requires a steady hand. Next, the technician uses a different handheld power tool to cut out the gas cap opening. Once finished, he sands the edges smooth. The finished carbon fiber components come here to a sealed painting station. Buyers can choose any finish they want, but many opt for a clear coating that protects the surface but reveals its distinctive weave. Here, a specialist sprays the parts with an automotive grade sealant. ST1. The S stands for supercharger, the T for turbocharger, and 1 indicates that this is the company's first model. Few cars in history have had both turbocharger and supercharger united in a single engine. Having both a supercharger and a turbocharger means that the car has instant throttle response no matter how low or high the revs. Here, a technician mounts the clutch onto the aluminum engine block. This clutch is an accessible component that can be easily replaced if necessary. Zenvo adhere to this same philosophy when designing the car's powertrain. They use high quality but conventional parts rather than exotic, difficult to replace components wherever possible. Next, the worker installs the compressor for the air conditioning. Even with this addition, the engine remains remarkably small considering how powerful it is. Yet another benefit of combining a turbocharger with a supercharger. The intake manifold of the Zenvo ST1 houses a liquid-to-air intercooler. This provides the engine with cool air to maximize its efficiency. The cores of the intercooler are long cylinders made of dozens of extremely thin aluminum discs stacked together. They provide an enormous amount of surface area in a very small space. As the water pump moves cooled water through those cores, the discs absorb the heat from the charged air and disperse it.
Combustion engines need air to work. A supercharger is essentially a very sophisticated air pump. It boosts the performance of the engine by forcing in extra air. Zenvo's engine management system was developed entirely in-house from scratch. As a result, the manufacturer has complete control over the car's parameters. Here, a metal cutting machine saws a long aluminum rod into small disks. Thanks to its remarkably low density, aluminum can be cut easily and quickly. However, the process generates heat from friction. To keep the saw blade from overheating, a constant stream of liquid is applied. The aluminum disks then go to a highly specialized five-axis milling machine. The machine has multiple stations, allowing it to work on multiple components at the same time. This machine can shape a Zenvo fuel cap in less than 10 minutes with extreme precision. Working from the top down, the cutting tool sculpts the aluminum so easily, it looks like it's carving a material that's as soft as wax. The machine mills the fuel cap following a computer-aided design, while monitors display its swift and precise motions. The milling machine automatically selects the tools it needs. Here, it's using one of the thinnest bits to etch out the company's name. This machine has a cutting tool that's thinner than a human hair. In about eight minutes, the milling machine can transform a simple aluminum disc into a sleek component of a high-performance supercar. When it comes to a hypercar as exclusive as the Zenvo ST1, the interior must be as luxurious and flawless as the exterior. That's why the car maker customizes the upholstery for each buyer, right down to the stitching pattern. It takes five cowhides to upholster a single ST1. Here, specially trained craftsmen unfold a hide on a cutting table. They begin by inspecting the surface for any flaws. Next, they lay the cutting patterns out. They use small metal weights to keep the patterns in place as they work. These cutting patterns were created by both the upholstery specialist and the car's designer. The craftsmen trace the outline of the patterns, transferring the cutting plan to the cowhide. They must pay close attention to the position of each pattern on the hide. The leather closest to the spine of the cow is the best quality material. The leather becomes thinner and flawed near the belly area of the cowhide. Now, the upholstery specialist begins cutting out the segments. These pieces will be used to upholster parts of the seats and doors. It takes both training and practice to be able to cut with this combination of speed and precision. Once the patterns are cut, it's time to put them all together. A craftsman uses a sewing machine to join two pieces with a closed stitch. Leather is an unforgiving material, so the worker must proceed with great care.
While you can be trained to become an automotive upholstery specialist in less than a year, true mastery takes much longer. This technician's expertise makes the process look much easier than it actually is. Now he uses a machine that sews a double stitch pattern. The customer can choose this decorative feature in any color they wish. Sewing leather requires specialized sewing machines, needles, and thread, as well as careful adjustment of the thread tension. The thread must be made of upholstery weight polyester or rayon, or it could easily break when sewing. Here, a craftsman installs a section of the door upholstery. This centerpiece has been quilted with an embroidery machine. It takes two and a half hours to embroider the pattern on this particular section. He carefully installs the armrest, ensuring the tightest possible fit. The embroidered quilting above the armrest is a hexagonal pattern. This design motif is found throughout the ST1. Even the car's grill features hexagons. The technician carefully inspects every inch of the upholstery surface to ensure it's flawless. A craftsman will follow the same procedure for each of the car's interior elements. This inspection process plays a large role in why it takes roughly 10 months to build a single ST1. Final assembly of the ST1 takes place at this plant in Zeeland, Denmark. It takes about four months for technicians to take the various sub-assemblies and transform them into a complete high-performance hypercar. Some of the sub-assemblies of this ST1 have been here for two months. Workers carefully build them piece by piece. Here, two technicians install the left door to the frame. Now it's time to add the piece that will house the gas cap and feed pipe. Flanges on the top and bottom of the part provide attachment points. The technician lines everything up and screws it in place. The carbon fiber weave is clearly visible on this part. This was done for aesthetic effect. The worker lines up the mouth of the gas pipe and attaches it. Once it's securely in place, he installs Zenvo's signature aluminum gas cap. This next part serves three functions. It houses the tail lights, provides a support frame for the exhaust pipe, and has a grill that vents hot air from the engine. The part is made of anodized aluminum rather than plastic to protect it from the high temperatures generated by the engine and exhaust pipe. It's time to install the rear windshield frame, which is also made of aluminum. Technicians attach the glass in the top portion of the frame. The bottom third remains open, providing another vent for the hot engine air. The grill of the vent features the same hexagonal design motif repeated throughout the car. Now, workers install the rear hood. They inspect the gaps between panels to ensure they're correctly aligned. The gaps on the ST1 are relatively narrow compared to other handmade low volume production cars. The carefully designed rear spoiler will keep the ST1 on the ground, even when it hits those high speeds. The technicians have left the rear construction open so they can easily install the engine. They use a hydraulic crane system to help them correctly position the V8 powerhouse before bolting it in. 
Thanks to the engine's location, the car's weight distribution is 56% in the rear and 44% in the front. Next, workers install the supercharger, which sits on top of the intake manifold. Inside the manifold is one of the intercoolers we saw being constructed earlier. Now, a technician adds the engine's number plate. On the plate is the serial number ST1009, because this is car number nine. Insulation on the turbine side of the turbocharger improves efficiency and helps prevent overheating in the engine compartment. Zenvo's made-to-order engine management system will control every aspect of the car's performance. Once the ST1 is fully assembled, it's ready for the all-important dyno testing phase. It takes an entire day to complete this step, as Zenvo adjusts all the parameters of the car's sophisticated electronics. Since the car is Bluetooth enabled, there's no need to hook up any cables to monitor the car's performance. Ducts situated directly behind the tailpipes vent the car's exhaust outdoors while it's being tested. Once it's past the dyno station testing stage, this ST1 is ready for mandatory road testing. Thanks to the design of its exterior lines, even when parked, the car looks like it's ready to pounce. A sleek molded heat shield covers the turbocharger under the rear hood. Inside, Zenvo's signature hexagonal pattern can be found throughout the car. From the main instrument display graphics to the infotainment console and upholstery. In the Scandinavian design tradition, form is always supposed to follow function. The function of the ST1 is to terrify the competition and look good while doing it. With its predatory curves covering a supercharged turbo V8, capable of punching the car from zero to 60 in just three seconds, this Danish hypercar is actually quite traditional.